This is how you can eat nutrient-rich dairy from cows and sheep, even if you are lactose intolerant. Check this out, guys. I'm gonna break it all down for you in this video. Why would you want to consume dairy from cows or sheep in the first place? Rather than just a plant milk. Isn't almond milk and oat milk, aren't these better for you? No way. If you guys have seen any of my content, you know that oat milk is often can contain seed oils, other additives, carrageenan, gums that could potentially mess up your gut. Almonds do not digest well for people. And none of those plant milks, even if it's just almonds and water, have the nutrients that are in these type of dairy. What kind of nutrients am I talking about? Bioavailable proteins, whey protein, actual protein that you can use to build muscles and recover. We know that dairy protein helps support glutathione production, this major antioxidant in the human body. They have vitamin K2, a form of vitamin K found almost exclusively in animal products, unless you eat fermented soybeans, which is called natto and looks kind of gross. Vitamin K2 is almost exclusively found in animal foods and it is consistently associated with improved cardiovascular outcomes. Yes, in the Rotterdam study, those people who had the most vitamin K2 in their diet had the lowest rates of cardiovascular mortality and calcification of the aortic valve. Even though those people are eating animal foods like butter and milk and cheese, those foods look to be very consistently associated with better cardiovascular outcomes. I would argue dairy is protective against cardiovascular outcomes, even though it contains the much vilified saturated fat. Milk from animals also contains calcium, and I think it's important to balance calcium and phosphorus in your diet. So a lot of us eat lots of meat, which I think is a very healthy food for humans and organs. These foods are high in phosphorus. Balancing that phosphorus with calcium from dairy is a good way to mimic what your ancestors have done historically, and I think that it's a healthy choice from a biochemical perspective of your human body. The list of nutrients in milk is very long. There's also odd chain fatty acids. Milk contains riboflavin. The nutrients in milk are myriad. Just understand that you consuming dairy is a better version of you, but there are a lot of us, including myself, who are lactose intolerant. So what do you do? There are many forms of dairy that are fermented, like kefir or yogurt or cheeses that have little or no lactose. You can eat these foods and get all the benefits of dairy. Many of them even have the benefits of fermentation in terms of microbiome support, and you're not gonna be worrying about ending up in the bathroom or farting around people that you care about, which is embarrassing. Just telling you guys how it is. So let's take it from the top. Cow's milk has about 12 grams of lactose per eight ounces. Goat milk, which I love, has about nine to 11 grams per eight ounces, so maybe 10% less. Some people tolerate goat milk better than cow's milk, but there's not a huge difference in the amount of lactose in there. But when you get into the fermentation, let's start with kefir. I know most of you guys say kefir, but you're wrong. It's kefir. Ask any Bulgarian, but you can say kefir if you want. You say kefir, I'll say kefir. We're talking about fermented milk. Kefir is fermented milk for about 12 hours, maybe 24 hours at 78 degrees Fahrenheit with a special kefir culture, which usually has more strains of bacteria and some eukaryotic organisms than a yogurt. But kefir has significantly less lactose, two to four grams per eight ounces of kefir in lactose. So a lot of us who are lactose intolerant can drink kefir without really getting any GI side effects or having the bloat or farting ending up in the bathroom. My favorite way to eat kefir is in the morning with some honey. Super proud of our new lineage, raw, organic, glyphosate-free honey. I combine those two things in the morning before I surf and that is my breakfast. Yogurt is a shorter fermentation at a higher temperature. Yogurt is often heated to around 140 degrees. Different cultures in yogurt versus kefir, often less cultures, yogurt is still healthy, and yogurt has around four to six grams of lactose per eight ounces. It's fermented for less amount of time. Fermentation means bacteria or eukaryotic organisms are eating the lactose in the milk and making lactic acid. That decreases the amount of lactose which causes us symptoms. So yogurt is another great option. Greek yogurt, which is a concentrated form, has even more protein and is probably even better in terms of lactose than a regular yogurt. Cheese is the real superstar when it comes to lactose content. A Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese, which is always raw because it's that way from Italy, it has to be raw. And you can see it on the label, it'll say raw milk. It's usually from grass-fed cows. That has almost zero lactose, 0.1 grams of lactose per one ounce of cheese, which means if you eat eight ounces of this cheese, you're not even getting one gram of lactose. That's definitely not going to trigger lactose intolerance symptoms in humans. Pecorino Romano, which is a sheep's cheese, also is usually raw. In fact, I think it has to be raw to be called Pecorino Romano. 
0.1 grams per eight ounces. No significant amounts of lactose in this cheese. An aged Swiss, which is one of my favorites, also 0.2 grams of lactose per ounce, which means not much lactose in this cheese. Any of the aged cheeses are gonna be very easy to consume from a lactose perspective. These are not gonna trigger lactose intolerance and aged cheese has a lot of benefits. Some cheeses like Jarlsberg or Emmenthaler are cultured with a specific bacteria that increases the amount of K2 in these cheeses massively. And that's been shown in multiple studies and found to be beneficial for humans, as I mentioned. So Swiss, Pecorino Romano, Parmigiano Reggiano, really any aged cheese more than 120 days is gonna have very small amounts of lactose. Contrast this with soft cheeses like Camembert or Brie, those could have more lactose and might trigger lactose intolerance symptoms. But all of these are great options for you, even if you are lactose intolerant. Some people feel that raw milk, which is unpasteurized milk, improves their lactose intolerance. It's something I've experienced personally, but we don't have any good studies to prove this right now. So if you're lactose intolerant and you have access to some unpasteurized milk, some raw milk, try it out. Start slow with all of this. Just have a teaspoon or a tablespoon of kefir or yogurt, a couple of bites of cheese, and see how you react. Again, remember that the nutrients in these foods are unique. They're beneficial for humans, and getting some form of cow, sheep, or goat dairy, or buffalo dairy, or camel's dairy in your diet is going to improve your health. There are tons of studies which show this, and these are way better than plant milk. So I want you guys to be able to eat these things. Don't fear this, even if you're lactose intolerant. Some people who are lactose intolerant can't tolerate milk no matter what, so you might not be able to do raw milk. If you're worried about contamination of raw milk, find a farm who you trust, and remember that there are actual studies of raw milk, like the Gabriella study and others, showing the kids who grow up on or off farms drinking raw milk versus pasteurized milk have lower rates of asthma, eczema, and allergies. So I think there's a good amount of evidence, that study and many others, to suggest that raw milk has a unique place in the human diet. So if you want to try raw milk, look for a farmer. You can go to realmilk.com. I have no association with that website. It's a Weston A. Price website, and that will tell you where raw milk is near you. In some states, you can actually buy raw milk in the grocery store. Yay, California. It's one of the one things they get right. But most states in the U.S., you cannot buy raw milk in the grocery store. You actually have to befriend a farmer and join a co-op or a farm share to get raw milk. Raw milk, raw kefir. These are my favorite. When I'm doing cheeses, I prefer raw cheeses for all the same reasons. The research looks like when you have a whey protein, which is undenatured, a whey protein that has not been heated, that is better for the immune system in some ways in humans. That gets a little granular beyond the scope of this video. But remember that raw milk is great. If you're lactose intolerant and you can't tolerate raw milk, kefir is fermented, yogurt is fermented, significantly less lactose, and aged cheeses you can eat with no problems, guys. Another thing to consider with dairy and the benefits of calcium beyond the calcium phosphorus ratio is that eating calcium with red meat can mitigate the absorption of iron. Some of us eat a lot of red meat and we're worried about iron absorption. We're checking our ferritin levels. Adding dairy to red meat, whether it's cheese or cheeseburger or drinking kefir or yogurt or milk with your meat, mitigates iron absorption somewhat and can be a way to balance these things. So again, calcium phosphorus ratio, calcium with your iron can mitigate the absorption of iron a little bit. I don't think iron is harmful for humans in reasonable amounts, but there are some of us, myself included, that seem to avidly absorb iron and I keep track of my ferritin levels. It doesn't mean that I stop eating red meat because I feel like red meat is one of the most nutritious foods on the planet. It doesn't mean that I stop eating organs like liver or heart. It just means that I keep an eye on my ferritin levels and I often try and consume dairy when I'm eating these foods. If you guys find this content helpful, I send out a free newsletter every Sunday. Go to my website, paulsaladinomd.co, that's .co, not .com, and sign up for my free newsletter. There's all kinds of free resources there, animal-based calculator, all kinds of stuff there, but the newsletter is very valuable. I talk about all this stuff and more. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope it's helpful. If you wanna find more content or more information about raw milk and dairy, you can check out these videos.